Hey everyone, welcome to Zero Labs. Today is Wednesday, November 18th, 2015. I'm Mark Brash, your host, and today we're going to do something a little different. Today, we're going to do some real science. So yeah, we're, we're taking a little break today from the Keshi pseudoscience experiments and we're going to do some real science today. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to electroplate or electroform copper onto a plastic part. So there are several steps involved in electroplating plastic. The first, the first step is you need to have some form of conductive paint. So what I want to do is I want to electroplate the inside of my Keshe plasma reactor spheres. What I'm going to do for conductive paint is I'm going to create a nanoparticle copper paint using nano copper, uh, nanoparticle copper in a polyurethane varnish binder to paint onto the surface which will give me that initial conductive coating that I can clip onto to electroplate in solution. I have already purchased plenty of copper sulfate and to precipitate the nanoparticle copper out of the solution, the copper sulfate solution, I have uh, eight ounces of citric acid or I'm sorry, ascorbic acid or vitamin C. Um, so let's get started. So as you can see, I have a couple of high-tech measuring cups that are precisely 50 milliliters each. I have my digital gram scale, not used for weighing out illegal substances, I promise you. And uh, I have my high-tech graduated cylinder. Got my compounds and I have some water heating on the rocket stove right now. It's probably already boiling. Uh, it's pretty close. We're up to 184 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's that's about where I wanted it. It's 84 degrees centigrade. The recipe calls for 70 degrees centigrade water. This is hot enough. So I'm just gonna set this can right here. You can see it steaming away. And first step is to make a saturated solution of um, citric acid. I'm sorry, of ascorbic acid. This, incidentally, uh, I will link to this below. This recipe was given to us by Robert Murray Smith, who is a, a brilliant scientist who's been doing a lot of work with graphene and supercapacitors. And uh, he, he deviates from that every once in a while and he does something a little interesting. And I found this very interesting and, and found it very useful for what I need it for. And uh, I think you should check out his channel as well. Um, so anyway, so I tar my scale with the cup on it. I'm gonna measure out about two grams Last time I tried one gram, it wasn't enough. So I'm gonna measure out two grams of copper sulfate. Now I'm gonna measure out 10 grams of citric acid, I'm sorry, ascorbic acid. I keep screwing that up. Last time I only measured out five grams and that wasn't enough to make a saturated solution. One of these days I'm gonna get myself some real scientific glassware. All right, so there's 50 milliliters. Uh, 
and 100 milliliters. Okay, there's another five grams. So now we're up to 15 grams of ascorbic acid into 100 milliliters of heated water. And that seems to be fairly well saturated. All right. Let's take 50 milliliters now, pour it into my copper sulfate, my two grams of copper sulfate. I'm going to make sure to stir this up very well. And now the object of this game is to agitate the citric acid solution while I slowly, slowly add to it the copper sulfate. And what should happen is it should form a bluish cloud, which would be actually a, a, uh, a reddish cloud, which would be the copper in solution. You can see a tiny bit of copper already in the bottom of this from my, from my last, what I consider to be a failed attempt. But we're going to try this again. All right, so I'm going to stir I'm going to. Got it spinning around real nicely. And I'm going to slowly add. And there it goes. And by doing this, what's happening is the there's copper precipitating out of the copper sulfate. It's it is being converted into nanoparticle copper, which will sediment out to the bottom. And after it finishes sedimenting, what I will do is I will collect it dry it out, collect it and then use that as the conductor for my paint. So there you have it. I'm going to let this I'm going to let this solution settle for several hours and once it's finished settling out, then I will uh, just siphon off the top, let the layer of copper down the bottom that collects dry out and then use that as the uh, conductive material for my conductive paint that will go on the inside wall of these to be my first layer for the electroplating process, which we'll do next. So that's it for this edition of Zero's Workshop. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to actually be using this copper sulfate mixed with some sulfuric acid in a distilled water solution with a copper electrode and a small small amount of voltage and we'll be actually electroplating copper onto the inside of the spheres thanks all for watching as always please rate share comment and subscribe to my videos and peace everyone